The FAA has concluded its inquiry into SpaceX's Starship second flight test, which did not end as planned. Now, the announcement came on February 26th following the incident on November 18th at the Starbase facility in South Texas, where the vehicle's two stages met an explosive and destructive end shortly after takeoff. The mission's failure was marked by the explosion of both the first and second stages of the Starship, occurring approximately 3.5 and 8 minutes post-launch respectively. Now, this event has been a significant point of analysis, and in response to the failure, SpaceX has been actively preparing for a third flight test, adhering its strategy of rapid development and testing, and this approach is crucial for the iterative design process of refining the design and functionality of Starship for future launches. Now, the FAA has clarified that the conclusion of the investigation does not automatically grant SpaceX permission for subsequent launches of IFT-4, IFT-5, and the company is required to undertake specific corrective measures and obtain a modified license from the FAA that complies with safety, environmental, and regulatory standards. SpaceX has some more information too, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, this resulted in a commanded shutdown of all six engines and an autonomous flight safety system flight termination triggering per flight safety rules. So the FAA then classified this launch as a mishap, and then SpaceX took over the mishap investigation, and they had to do some things to mitigate this process of getting flight IFT-3 off the ground. Now, here's a little update from SpaceX. Second flight test of Starship and Super Heavy achieved a number of important milestones with lessons learned uh, that informed vehicle upgrades debuting on Flight 3 as we continue to advance the capabilities of the most powerful launch system ever developed. Here's the information. The second test flight of Starship and Super Heavy port milestone developed at on November 18th, 2023, SpaceX's Starship successfully lifted off at 7 o'clock, 7.02 a.m. from Starbase, all 33 Raptor, uh, 33 Raptor engines fired, started up successfully, and for the first time, completed a full duration burn during ascent. This is huge news, because if they can do this for IFT2, they can do it for IFT3, IFT4, IFT5, etc. Uh, the first time this technique has been done successfully with a vehicle of this size. So they just broke a record. And following stage separation, Super Heavy initiated its boost back burn, which sends commands to 13 of the vehicle's 33 Raptor engines. Now, this is uh, some information that SpaceX is sharing, um, and it propels the rocket toward its intended landing location, which is in the Gulf of Mexico right now. But eventually, they'll do a boost back burn, and they'll come back to Starbase. But during this burn, uh, several engines began shutting down before one engine failed, quickly cascading to a rapid unscheduled disassembly or a rud of the booster. The booster blew up. The vehicle breakup occurred more than three and a half minutes into the flight. Pretty good uh, at an altitude of about 90 kilometers over the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the most likely root cause for the booster rud, this is new information, was determined to be filter blockage where liquid oxygen or LOX is supplied to the engines, leading to a loss of inlet pressure in engine oxidizer turbo pumps that eventually resulted in the engine failing in a way that resulted in the loss of the vehicle. It blew up. SpaceX has since implemented hardware changes, so it won't blow up, inside future booster oxidizer tanks to improve propellant filtration capabilities and refined operations to increase reliability. Basically, they learned lessons from IFT2, made some hardware changes, and now IFT3 should work out well. So this is, look at the next part of this. This is a really important part. At vehicle separation, Starship upper stage successfully lit all six Raptor engines. It's kind of hard to see what's going on after the separation. Um, flew a normal ascent until approximately seven minutes into the flight. That was groundbreaking when a planned vent of excess liquid oxygen propellant began. Additional propellant had been loaded, this is new, uh, on the spacecraft before launch in order to gather data representative of future payload, payload deploy missions and needed to be disposed of prior to re-entry to meet required propellant mass targets of splashdown. They had to vent some of this stuff. Now, this is where it gets tricky. A leak in the aft section of the spacecraft that developed when the liquid oxygen vent was initiated resulted in a combustion event and subsequent fires that led to the loss of communication between the spacecraft's flight computers. 
full shutdown. The result in a commanded shutdown of all six engines prior to completion of the ascent burn, followed by an explosion. Flight termination system happened. The autonomous flight safety system, or the F, uh, followed by um, uh, an explosion flight termination system leading to vehicle breakup. The flight's test conclusion came when the spacecraft was at an altitude of 150 kilometers and a velocity of 200 or 24,000 kilometers an hour coming to the first starship to reach outer space. Okay, this is huge, 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 huge. So they reached outer space with the starship. The next step is to do the, the flight tests, whatever those tests are for the next one, which I, there's going to be a sloshing propellant transfer and also possibly a Starlink test in there somewhere. Um, now, they said that they implemented new hardware changes uh, to improve leak reduction, fire protection, and refined operations um, for the propellant. Now, there's a little bit more information. SpaceX shared a bunch of information in this post. And I want to know what you think about it down below in the comments. Also, while you're down there, just hit the like button. So the water-cooled flame deflector and other pad upgrades made after Starship's first flight test performed as expected, requiring minimal post-launch work to be ready for vehicle tests and the next integrated flight test. Uh, following the flight test, SpaceX led the investigation. The FAA, so the FAA oversees the investigation and NASA does too. And the National Transportation Safety Board does as well. NASA is working with SpaceX for the Artemis program. So they have to be in constant contact and they are, they're in constant contact. They work with NASA and they're in constant contact with the FAA as well. And some of this stuff is, you know, it's, it's kind of boring. The FAA has to do a bunch of paperwork in order for these things to fly. And we have to wait. But while we're waiting, SpaceX is building more Starships for IFT-3, IFT-4, IFT-5, et cetera, et cetera. So upgrades derived from the flight test will debut on the next Starship and Super Heavy vehicles to launch from Starbase on Flight 3, IFT-3. SpaceX is also implementing planned performance upgrades, including the debut, a new thing, um, of new electric thrust vector control system for Starship's upper stage Raptor engines and improved uh, improving the speed of propellant loading operations prior to launch. So everything that we know now just got a big upgrade. It's a glow up for a starship and the thrust vector control. It's electric now, so it should be more reliable. And it's less weight as well. And now the speed of propellant loading is better so they can get starship up and running and ready to fly faster. So here SpaceX says more starships are ready to fly, putting flight hardware in a flight environment to learn as quickly as possible. Um, recursive improvement, basically what SpaceX does here, if you're not familiar, is they launch as many starships as they can and they learn through an iterative process. Every starship that fails, it's a learning process. They gather data from that starship and then they use it to make the next one better. So they learn from IFT2 and now IFT3 will be better than IFT2, IFT4 will be better than IFT3, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, recursive improvement is essential as we work to build a reusable launch system capable of carrying satellites, payloads, crew, and cargo to a variety of orbits and Earth, lunar, or Martian landing sites. So eventually uh, SpaceX will be going to Mars and Starship will be the way to do that. So let me know down in the comments below. Do you think IFT3 will be successful? 100% success flight test. Uh, while you're down there, hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button because it helps out the show tremendously. So thank you so much. Uh, this has just been a quick update about the SpaceX IFT3 flight.